now we're seeing uh, connections, right, between untreated hearing loss and cognitive decline. And this is a big concern, right, because health epidemic, something that a lot of people are very concerned about because we're living longer, but uh, we want to make sure with living longer, we have the quality of life and um, trying to avoid as much cognitive decline as possible. So can you tell us a little bit, Dr. Harris, about um, some of the background, some of the studies maybe or information that's been recently uh, brought to our attention about some of the links between untreated hearing loss and cognitive decline? Uh, what, what's been out there? Hearing loss actually is the um, top or number one modifiable risk factor for hearing or for cognitive decline and dementia. So there's studies that show even mild hearing loss can actually double the risk of cognitive decline. Moderate hearing loss can triple it and severe hearing loss can actually increase it by fivefold. So the evidence is there showing the, the link between the two. The theories on why, not concrete, but there's a few well-accepted theories about why that the link is there. And so one of the most, I would say one of the most commonly known or thought of reasons is the reason for social isolation. Um, the fact that people with hearing loss tend to not engage in social activities. They start kind of reducing their just social engagement altogether because of the, the hearing loss specifically. So that in itself can lead to reduced cognition, I guess, in, in general. So the other theories are, are interesting because they're almost opposite of each other. Uh, one is the increased cognitive load really is um, meaning that the additional resources to decode the auditory signals may deplete the cognitive reserve. So um, your brain is just working harder altogether to work hard to understand speech. The other is kind of the opposite is that with hearing loss, it's almost kind of a, a use it or lose it type thing where if the brain isn't getting auditory stimulation and actually will reorganize in the brain and so that in itself or essentially shrinking of the brain. Right. And none of us want to see our brain shrinking as we age because <laughs> that can only lead to negative outcomes, right? So um, when we say most modifiable risk factor, uh, do you, how do you interpret that? Because I think that, that we can unpack that a little bit. So when we say modifiable, what exactly do we mean? That means um, things that can be changed, lifestyle changes. One of the things um, that increases risk is genetics. We can't change that. Um, however, we can change things like treating our hearing loss or um, treating diabetes, um, reducing alcohol um, and smoking, things like that, which we can actually change versus unmodifiable things that we, we can't. That we have no control over, right? Yeah. Yeah. And why would we want to change those things earlier rather than later? I think a lot of people think, oh, well, my hearing loss isn't that bad, so I'm not going to do anything now. Why is that probably the worst kind of thing you could you could do for yourself? Yeah, because once the process starts, you can't really get that back. So um, because there's such a limited treatment for cognitive decline and dementia, that being proactive in early identification and early treatment is really the, the number one thing you can do.